welcome to this week's Scuba Tube. In today's show, Sean and myself are going to talk about Blue Planet 2 uh, lobsters. As you do. Uh, we're also going to do a, a gear review, which was picked by you guys, our awesome YouTube family. Uh, and we're going to talk about another Kickstarter project. Uh, so let's dive straight into the news. Oh, our Kickstarter project. Anyway, researchers in Antarctica have pulled a world's first. They've managed to attach a camera to a mink whale. Now that's pretty cool. What's even cooler is where they've placed it. So the camera is right on top of the whale, giving the researchers a POV shot. Uh, the lead scientist of the operation, Dr. Ari Friedlander, uh, from the University of Santa Cruz in California, couldn't be happier with the results that they're seeing from this camera. Yeah, so they attached the, the whale, attached the camera using suction cups. They didn't use a nail gun, which is really good of them. Yeah. So kind of them, yeah, nail gun. Anyway, so they don't hurt the whale, obviously. Uh, the POV shot is a great way to see how the whale feeds and also what it eats in the oceans, tires and plastic bags. Oh, no, that's sad. Um, minky whales move up to uh, to 24 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. So uh, so having the opportunity to see, uh, that is just an amazing experience. Um, and it's no surprise how happy the team are and the fact that the suction cups are so good. Unfortunately, uh, at one point, one of the cameras did detach from the whale, uh, which they're, kind of, they're supposed to do. Yeah, they're supposed yeah. to kind of stick to them, and then after a given time, they just detach, detach and they float back up, yeah. and they collect it. But, but this one wasn't on time. No. It shouldn't have gone. A tad earlier. A tad um, luckily, you know, they, uh, they managed to uh, sort of pick it up from the surface and, uh, and put it back onto the whale. <laughs> come here, mate, come here. <laughs> uh, it was noted that uh, whales, like this whale, likes to eat like Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was continuously feeding, uh, and another cool thing is that the cam picked up was how frequently it lunges uh, and how quickly it would actually process water and feed again. So yeah, it's, it does things very, very quick, very speedily. Yeah, it's just a cool thing. It's the cool thing to see. Yeah. It's a cool thing that's happened. They're very a rare. Yeah, minky. Species, so and it didn't to, hurt them in any way. So. No, the nail gun, it, it, there was no nail gun. Okay. Uh, okay, so for our next story, we head over to Geneva in Switzerland. Oh, see you later. Yeah. Uh, I wish. Um, <laughs> as of the 1st of March, it's going to be illegal for you to boil a lobster, killing it in the pot. Oh. Uh, the practice is being outlawed because the Swiss say it's cruel and uh, lobsters can sense pain. Yeah, man. Funny it's, that. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? It's crazy. <clears throat> so this is the first ever time that this legislation like this has happened in the world. The Swiss are now calling the rest of the world to follow suit, uh, for, to find a more humane way of killing lobsters. Yeah. Uh, so this new law uh, says that lobsters must be transported in their uh, their natural environment, so in a seawater rather than icebox as well. Uh, the government have uh, have vowed that offenders will not slip through the net. <laughs> I like what you did there. Um, and uh, if caught, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you can get up to uh, three years in prison. Three years. Just imagine that you're in you're in prison with a mass murderer. These your cellmates. Like, oh yeah, I killed my granny. <laughs> Smashed the face. And what did you do? I. Oh, yeah. I pulled a lobster. You animal! How dare you get out of the way? I'm going to shake you. Anyway, animal <laughs> rights groups are now, of course, very happy with this result. So, and so they should be. It's, it's a great win for everyone, even lobsters. So, uh, come on, rest of the world. You know, let's get let's get you doing that, and let's get this law interaction everywhere. Yeah. Right. Let's get into it. What you guys and girls voted marks to review this week, and the winner is with 46% the X Deep. Ghost wing BCD wing system. Oh, okay. Did I yeah. say that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The XD Ghost. There you go. Uh, so the Ghost is. Can you see it? You can touch it. Yeah. No, it's, it's intangible. Uh, so the Ghost <laughs> is incredibly lightweight. Uh, it's basically it's a real good way to start getting into backplate harness and wing systems. Cool. Uh, instead of your like generic what I call recreational BCD, which kind of is what it is. Yeah. Um, this is made out of three different components and you can adjust them, you can start to customize them. Mm. Uh, you've got the back plates, you've got the more rigidity, but instead of like a, uh, a really heavy, clunky stainless steel back plate that you need, sorry for the train in the background. The train loved it, it was <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> uh, Instead of a heavy stainless steel uh, back plate, if you're just diving somewhere light, you don't need all of that trim weight. Uh, it's got like a, uh, an aluminum alloy back plates and it's skeleton as well so it's all kind of cut out so it still has the strength but it's very very light so it's great for if you're gonna go scuba diving in the bath yeah yeah <laughs> 
I've never that's, done that. That's my <laughs> input. <laughs> Um, the uh, the bladder is uh, is cut in a certain way so that most of your buoyancy is down towards the small of your back, so that keeps you nice level trim in the water. Uh, you can adjust it as well. You can kind of move it up and down. Um, it's very well put together piece of kit. If you then want to progress on to uh, sort of swap the bladder out, you can do it at a later stage. Um, it is it's, it's nice. Um, it's a smart piece of kit. Well, that's probably why people voted for it. Yeah, I was. So talk about it. Yeah, I am tempted by one. Um, I haven't sort of got one yet, just because... <laughs> uh, it, does, it does come in two different versions. You get the deluxe and the, no, I think they just call it the standard version. Uh, the standard version is a bit more DIR, so it's just single piece webbing, uh, whereas the, uh, the deluxe harness has a bit of padding and some pinch clip adjustments, uh, if that's what you're uh, but overall, good BCD. Um, good work system, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of downsides. Uh, if you're using it in the UK, it doesn't have that trim weight that you'd want from a like a stainless steel back plate. Um, you can only use it for single cylinders, but it's always really made for. Uh, and you can swap the bladder at a later stage. But yeah, it's, it's a decent BCD, I highly recommend. Cool, all right, so the vote's now open for next week's show. So should have just popped up there, get voting. Anyway, let's talk about our last story in today's show. Keep Britain Tidy has gone on record to saying that Blue Planet 2 was a game changer when it comes to pollution in our waters. Since the show aired, there's been a massive surge of interest to help clean our waters. Yeah, so, so much that the, uh, the charity is now looking to recruit 400,000 volunteers to help with this year's Great British Spring Clean. Uh, they've said that as environmentalists, uh, we've been seeing, uh, or we've been seeing, sorry, uh, plastic pollution for a long time, but now the general public have been exposed to it. Uh, they want their government and politicians to do more. Yeah, the spring clean happens the first weekend of March. Uh, if, you want, if you're watching this video on YouTube, then I've linked the sign up below. If you're watching this on Facebook, well, yeah, you know what you need to do. So yeah, get out there, get cleaning your local beaches and its waters. Yeah, uh, so it's that time again, Sean. Uh, so what have you picked for this week's Kickstarter? He's excited about this one. I'm really, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's cool, man. So okay, this week I've picked a cancelled Kickstarter. So, there's not much out there. No, no. Like, for scuba diving, if, 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 unless it's a, um, like an air cylinder type thing, there's not, there's not really much out there. Yeah, there's a lot of snooba stuff. And yeah. Uh, bits and bobs. Literally, it's all like air pump stuff. But anyway, this one was called the Extra Breath Snorkel. Um, so it's a squeeze pump. That, but actually no, right, let's pause that. So what it does, you've got your regular snorkel, uh -huh. yep, and then you attach this to the outside of it, and basically what it is, and you connect it through the, the diaphragm at the bottom, yep. um, and what it does is basically, it's like a little cylinder that attaches, and it's got a little pump. So when you're on the surface, you squeeze the pump, it fills the cylinder or the bladder with air, and then you can go down, like obviously you can snorkel, like breathe normally. When you go down deeper, if you want a bit more bottom time, you release the valve, and then it just lets some air in, and then you can breathe further underwater. Apparently, you can you can have about double bottom time. Obviously, it depends on how you know how you can hold <gasps> air for and obviously breathe it out. But yeah, I thought it was quite cool. Yeah, it's yeah. Obviously, it got cancelled, so it didn't really go anywhere or do anything. It's just yeah. What do you guys think about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, exhale on the way up. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we're not endorsing this product in any no, way. No, no, well, no, it's cancelled. <laughs> the, 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 it is cancelled. It, it did not get made. It's just an interesting, an the interesting idea, the concept. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're seeing a lot of that for the snorkelers, uh, like with like spare airs and stuff, mm. where um, it's, it's designed for snorkelers. You, you go down and it's kind of like real entry level scuba. Um, you just have to be careful with it. Yeah, or, yeah. That, that sort of thing when it comes to cylinders and snorkeling. It's a very, yeah, it's a really dangerous era. But yeah, I thought that was it. Yeah. If you drop your watch, it'll be quite nice. And you're like, oh no, kind of dive down. Yep. Pick it Got up. Got it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why it was cancelled. But it's cool. <laughs> it was cool. Uh, okay, that's it for this week's show. Uh, join us next week because we have some exciting news for you. Um, spoiler alert, something's going to be changing. Something. I, I wonder what's going to be changing, Mark. Your shirt, for once. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing, James. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's some new, exciting news uh, and updates to the channel. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Stop laughing. Yeah, what's he laughing for? It's ex you do know your, your wiggling about is making the camera wiggle. Yeah, you're on thin ice, James. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Not long for this company. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching. Safe diving. Bye. Number four. Don't leave your electronics charging unattended. A boat actually burnt to the ground, or down to the dark depths of the Red Sea, because some people left their phones charging in their cabins whilst they went diving. The crew in the meantime were hoovering, which shorted out the electronics and caused a fire on the boat. So needless to say, unless you want to dive your liverboard the following year as a shipwreck, don't leave your stuff charging unattended.